don't quit your day job. I'm sure you've already heard that line from friends or family or acquaintances, and uh, hopefully they were joking when they said it, but every once in a while you might get someone who seems to be serious. And of course what they're referring to is the fact that they think your acting talent isn't quite good enough for you to do this full time, and you better hang on to your day job in order to pay the bills. And uh, it's ironic that in my experience as a business coach with actors, I've seen more acting careers hamstrung or stop dead in their tracks by the fact that the actor has picked the wrong day job uh, to, to help support their acting career. So in, in the end, it might have been the best thing they could have ever done it was to quit their day job and get another one. So what I want to talk about today are the three big ideas or the three criteria that you need to be thinking about when you're looking for a day job. Okay? You can also use these three criteria to examine uh, the day job you already have and see if, it, if it's working for you. And uh, also to see if there's anything you can do to change uh, the way you're working at that particular job to make it uh, work better for you as you're trying to pursue your, your career goals. Okay? So, let's get started. Okay, think of a three-legged stool. Okay? You got three legs and they support the top of the stool which you'd sit on. Now if any one of those legs is wobbly or not very strong, the stool itself is going to be unstable. And if that leg were to break, of course, the stool would fall over. Well, that's a really good analogy when you're thinking about uh, the criteria for the best actor day job you can find. You need th All three of these issues have to be in place, they have to be strong to give you a stable base or a stable economic base, right? You need to know that you're going to be able to make a certain amount of money every month in order to pay your bills and also to pursue your, uh, your acting goals, all right? So, the first leg of the stool. The first leg of the stool has to do with how much money you are actually making per hour of your work, all right? Uh, now, a lot of jobs are on an hourly basis, like if you're doing temp work. They say, okay, we'll pay you $25 an hour to do temp work. Okay, great, that's an easy calculation, right? Um, but if you're, say, working for tips as a waiter, you're making a very low base salary, right? They pay you below a minimum wage, and you're really working for the tips you make on top of that, all right? Um, a third kind of uh, way to, to think about how much you're getting paid is if you're a salesman and you're working on commission, okay? If you're selling cars or real estate or whatever, you need to calculate how many hours did I work to make that amount of money and then divide the hours into the money and it'll give you your hourly rate. Um, in my opinion, the worst kind of actor day job to have is a salaried position uh, because usually what happens is a salaried position comes with a whole lot more responsibility and you're going to be working a lot more hours. And when you actually calculate the amount of money they're paying you divided by the extra hours you're working, more than likely you'll find that you're only making a little bit more money, or in some cases even less money than you were before you got the salary position. Now all of this is really important because no matter how much money you're making per hour or however you want to figure it, you have to understand of course that since you're the venture capitalist for your company, that you're investing in your career, um, if the day job you have only pays you just enough to get by on, you're never going to be able to save up to invest in uh, new headshots or money to go to an audition or to take off work to go do a project. All right. So you need to calculate, am I making enough money to pay my bills, plus save a certain amount, say 5 to 10% every month, that I can then invest in my company, my career, in order to move it forward, okay? But unfortunately, what happens oftentimes is if you're in a day job already and they offer you a raise, it usually comes with a catch, and that's the second leg of the stool. So the second leg of the stool has to do with how easy it is for you to take off during the workday itself to go to an audition or a callback or an interview. So really, how flexible is the workday at your day job? Okay? And this is where, where I just mentioned salaried work. This is where this comes into play. Let me uh, tell you a little story. I knew an actress when she first got into Manhattan. She was doing temp work out of a temp agency. And so uh, she, that was working pretty well for her, you know, for a few months. And she kept temping at a certain insurance company's office. And eventually they pulled her aside, the insurance company, and they said, would you like to come temp for us, you know, on your own? 
And she said, sure. And they gave her a certain number of hours, and she came and went as she wanted to. And that was pretty good for a few months. And then they came back and said, you know, we could offer you more hours and a little more pay, but we need to make sure that you're going to at least be in the office a certain number of hours every day, like four or six hours a day, Monday through Friday. And so she said, yeah, okay, I can do that. I can do that. And then a few more months went by, and they pulled her aside again and said, you know, we can offer you health benefits and even more money, but we've got to know you're going to commit to 40 hours a week no matter what, you know, over this many days. And as you can see, what was happening was she was slowly trading her flexibility for more money and security, right? It's a really, really tricky balancing act because you might, you might find that the best day job with the most flexibility may not pay you a whole lot more than your old day job, um, but if you commit to their salary position with all the benefits and more money, you lose the flexibility. It's really tricky. Um, another issue that has to do with flexibility is really about uh, dealing with your boss. Um, if you are uh, in a position at a job where every time you have to take off for an audition, it's a big deal. You have to jump through a lot of hoops, you know, to find someone to cover your shift or, you know, promise you'll be back and work late that night and, and your boss gives you, you know, the, uh, a lot of grief for it. Eventually what's going to happen is you're going to start second guessing yourself at the audition, meaning you'll get the call to come in to read for something and you'll say, oh, you know, I, I think I'm a little too young for that role or too old or whatever, and you won't go. Because in the back of your mind, you're thinking, you know, last week I took off twice to go to this audition, and it was such a hassle, and, you know, I really don't want to piss my boss off again this week. And the minute that starts to happen to you, you're putting your career in neutral, all right? You've got to go to the audition in order to get the job, at the very least, you know, but, but also to go and network, put your face in front of the casting people and the producers and directors on a regular basis. And if you find that you're starting to do that, that's a big red flag that that job is not working for you, okay? So um, examine how flexible your day job is or when you are interviewing with an employer, be upfront about your needs uh, for flexibility during the workday. And if they come back to you and say, no, no, you've got to commit to this kind of schedule no matter what, then you need to keep looking. Okay, third leg of the stool. Now this has to do with uh, what happens with your day job when you actually get a big project. Not just a day on a movie or a few hours on a radio spot, but you're going to go away for two or three months out of town to work on a play, or if you're for a few weeks to work on a movie. What happens to your day job then? Okay. Uh, basically what you're looking for is one of two things. In the first instance, you're looking for a day job that would allow you to leave it completely, go to the project, and when you're done, pick up where you left off at the day job. The second instance is when you get a big project and then you can take the kind of work you're doing at the day job and work on it whenever you have free time around the rehearsal and performance schedule of your acting project. So let me give you an example, okay? In the first instance, I know an actor who sells cars for a living. That's his day job. So um, when he gets a big project, if he's going to go out of town for a couple of months to do a play, then he will just leave the dealership and go because he's being paid on a commission basis. He's not being paid on salary or on an hourly basis. Um, so he can come back when the show's over and pick up where he left off. In the second instance, I know an actor who does legal proofreading, which is somebody who actually sits down and reads all the boilerplate on a legal document to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And he works for a law firm that allows him to come and go any time of day or night, any day of the week. So he tends to work during the day, but if he's suddenly working on a movie or he's working on a play that's rehearsing in the daytime, he'll come in at night. Um, and so he has total flexibility about putting in the same amount of hours to satisfy his, you know, his boss at his day job, but he gets to decide when he wants to do that. And actually that leads to um, one more point about this third leg, is that if you really want to go for sort of the brass ring concerning this particular issue, you should be thinking about finding a day job where you are your own boss. I was a carpenter and a house painter. That was my day job. And um, 
what I would do is, you know, I would go to so-and-so's house and paint their apartment or build a loft at this person's place. And if I suddenly got a big project, I would just call them up and say, well, I'm rehearsing now from Monday through Thursday, so I'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay? Or if I needed to go out of town for a few months, I just wouldn't take any extra work, and then I would go to the job, come back. As soon as I hit you know, New York again, I'd get on the phone and scare up some work. All right? So um, when you're looking at this third leg, it gets down to how easy is it for you to either go away from the job and come back or flip the work hours around your rehearsal and performance schedule. So let's recap. Okay, so our three-legged stool. Leg one has to do with how much money are you really making per hour of your work. Of course, the goal is to make as much money as you possibly can to not only pay your bills, but to invest in your acting career. Uh, but of course, there is the catch, which leads to the second leg of the stool, which is flexibility versus money. Most jobs that will offer you more money demand less flexibility. And so you're going to have to uh, be careful with that balancing act. Only you are going to know how much flexibility you really need. Um, you know, I know actors who sometimes will take a job that will pay them a lot of money and have no flexibility, but it's for a very short period of time, like a month or two, and they'll take the job, make a lot of money, and then they'll leave the job. Uh, you know, the job itself is episodic. It's just for that period of time. And then that way they say, okay, fine, I'll, for two months I won't do any auditioning, but I'm going to focus on making a lot of money right now, and then that'll free me up you know, for the springtime when I can audition for summer stock or, you know, go to L.A. in the fall for pilot season or whatever. Um, and then finally, on the third, the third leg of the stool, you've got the ability to either come and go from the day job as you please once you get a big project, or the ability to take the day job with you and work around your performance schedule and your rehearsal schedule, okay? Um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you make sure all three of those legs are there on the stool. Because if one of them isn't there, it's not going to work as a day job for you. Or if one's a little shaky, you can't trust the day job so that you can really build a solid foundation with your money and your time to pursue your acting goals. Okay? So take these three criteria when you're out looking for uh, a new day job. All right? But if you already have something you're working on right now, uh, look at the three criteria and see if there's any way you can um, tweak your job to make it more flexible to meet these three needs that you have as an actor, okay? So um, don't quit your day job just yet. Break a leg at your next audition.